Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Eric. Thanks for watching my video. Today I'm going to show you how to make smoked cured pork chops. Now I've made smoked pork chops before. In fact, if you check out my videos, I'll leave a link below. Uh, when I smoked them originally, all I did was put them in a brine solution overnight and then threw them on the smoker. Uh, they came out like traditional pork chops. These I'm going to cure, and the difference between a, a non-cured and a cured pork chop is like when you think of ham. You know, pork is normally white in color. When you cure a ham, it turns pink. And what happens is the chemical composition of the meat actually changes when you cure it. In order to cure, you're going to need some curing salt. So this is a Prague powder number one. This is a common uh, powder that you use for curing. Uh, you can buy this on Amazon or at Walmart. The other basic ingredients for curing, if uh, you've seen any of my other videos, is a combination of kosher salt, brown sugar, uh, regular white sugar. Here is the big 10 pound center cut pork loin that I purchased. You can get up one like this at the grocery store or if you belong to Costco or um, Sam's Club. This I got this at Sam's Club. Very inexpensive, $1.68 a pound. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cure this for probably 11, 12 days. I'm actually going to inject it with some of that curing brine solution to make sure that it gets in all parts of the meat. And I'm going to keep it submerged in the refrigerator in the cure brine uh, mixture. And then after probably 11, 13 days, whatever it is, I'm going to pull it out, let them air dry for a day, and then I'm going to smoke them. And these should just taste like delicious pink uh, juicy pork chops i'm really looking forward to this this is my first attempt so i'm hoping it's going to come out okay but let me show you uh the basic uh, brine mixture and how to put that together and i'll show you how to do that in just a second all right guys here we are with all the ingredients necessary to make the brine now i'm gonna, not going to take credit for this brine this is pops brine for those of you who are into smoking, you might know Pop. He's a famous uh, smoker, barbecuer, who's uh, passed down this family brine recipe. I guess his uh, his dad owned a smoke butcher shop uh, for many, many years, and he smoked uh, and cured many different types of meat using this basic brine method. And it's very, very basic. You first start off, I'm just gonna give you the measurements for making it with one gallon of water. Uh, you can make more, obviously, if you need more. You just want to make sure the ratios are the same, particularly when it comes to this pink salt, because uh, this has sodium nitrate in it. You have to be very careful. Don't use more than you're supposed to, because using too much could be deadly, because um, you know when used safely, it cures the meat, makes it last longer, uh, but if used in excess, it could be very harmful or deadly to you. So make sure you follow this recipe to the T. So the first thing you're going to start off is with a gallon of water. I just picked these gallon jugs up at the store because they're like 60 cents. This is just regular distilled water. Uh, you can use regular tap water, but some people suggest that some of the impurities in the, uh, tap water can alter the brine a little bit. So that's up to you. You know, if I'm going to go through the trouble of doing this, I don't mind spending a couple bucks on getting some gallon jugs of this uh, distilled water here. So pour that in there. Now this is the basic recipe. First you're going to start off with that kosher salt. Uh, you can use anywhere from a third if you're really salt conscious and don't like being salty all the way up to a full cup. I'm using uh, three quarters of a cup so not quite a full cup but three quarters of a cup of regular kosher salt. To that, we're going to add one cup of regular white sugar. We're going to add one cup of brown sugar. Here's where we're going to add one tablespoon of that pink curing salt. I also have one tablespoon of pickling spice. You don't need this for the cure to work, but I'm just putting it in there to add a little flavors. And then last but not least, a couple uh, bay leaves. And that's pretty much it. You want to stir this up until you no longer see any salt particles. Now, some people suggest that maybe you take the half a gallon of water 
uh, and heat it up to a boil, which helps facilitate, um, you know, mixing the salt and sugar mixture. It helps it dissolve a little uh, faster. The only problem with that is then you have a hot brine and you never want to uh, inject any kind of meat with a hot brine because then you're going to start cooking it. So I don't mind just giving it some extra stirs at room temperature. It just takes a little bit more time. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Now, as long as you keep it in this ratio, you'll be fine. Whatever it is that you're trying to cure and grind, whether it's uh, a pork or a chicken or a turkey, I mean, you could pretty, or you know, you can use a beef brisket, like for making corned beef, whatever you want to do, just make sure you keep these ratios for one gallon of water. Uh, you want to make sure, you can also brine bacon, pork belly in this for making bacon as well. You just want to make sure that whatever it is you're making, it's fully submerged in this liquid. Chickens typically take two to three days. Uh, same thing with turkeys. If you're talking about bacon, probably one to two weeks. And then if you start getting into pork shoulders and, and stuff like that, you can go two weeks. And then the beef briskets and stuff, you can go all the way up to, uh, you know, three to four weeks. The hams and stuff like that, you can go much, much longer. But uh, this is all you have to do. So I'm going to continue stirring this until I don't see any more salt particles. And I will show you the next step in just a second. All right, guys, I cut the pork loin into two separate pieces so it could fit into my container. You want to make sure when you pick, pick your container that it's a non-reactive container. So glass or plastic is best. Uh, you can also use stainless steel uh, or a food quality bucket sometimes people use. Uh, as long as it's not metal that could have a reactive with the cure and the brine. So... Make sure you have a, a food quality plastic container is probably the best. So I've already injected this other one and now I'm just going to show you, you just want to stick it in. It's, you know, it's not rocket science here. You're just going to stick it in every half inch or so and you'll see the meat getting bigger as you do that. You also <clears throat> want to take it and kind of go a couple from the outside. Whoops. Don't be concerned if a little squirts out. <laughs> That's quite common. So you just want to do it as much as possible on each side. Make sure you get that brine solution and that curing solution throughout. Flip it over. Whoops. And the same type of thing. Just, you know, every half inch or so, squirt in a little more not too complicated we just want to make sure that some of this cure gets deep into the meat <clears throat> all right so i pretty much did most of this already so you're going to take that you're going to put it in the container you're going to make sure you take any excess brine from the pan you are using because you want to keep that ratio intact you want to have just the right amount of curing salt so it works properly and I'll grab the rest of my brine here. And uh, you want to make sure everything is completely covered. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this. I'm going to put it in the fridge. And like I said, this you want to stay 14 days if you could do it. If you could do two weeks. Uh at least a minimum of 10. What you want to do every day too is come in, kind of swirl it around, maybe flip the flip the pork around just to make sure that all sides get a chance to be submersed underneath this brining liquid. So that's pretty much it. The hard work is done as far as the preparation. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge and we'll be back in probably 11, 12 days. I'll show you the next step. Uh, we're going to let it dry out for a little bit, and then we're going to put it on the smoker, and it's going to be some delicious smoked pork chops. So I'll see you back here in uh, around 11, 12 days. Hello, guys. We're back with the pork. I've had this soaking in the brine for a full 14 days. I took it out. I rinsed it off under cold water, and I put it on this rack uh, in the fridge for around a day and a half, so it's nice and dry now. 
So we're going to put this on the smoker. I'm using a 50% blend of apple and hickory. And I'm going to smoke this until it gets up to an internal temperature of around 140 degrees. I'm also going to be making a whiskey orange glaze that I'm going to put on once it reaches 140 degrees and turn the temp up and try to bring it up to 150 when it'll be done so that the whiskey orange glaze can kind of caramelize on the pork. Are you looking forward to this, Kyle? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just listening to everything he says. It sounds good. And you may have seen in the previous video stuff like this. or <laughs> He loves Canadian bacon, and this is going to be like Canadian also bacon ham. or ham or pork chops because it's been in that curing solution for two ham weeks. Ham is Canadian bacon, by the way. Yeah, it is. So uh, we'll be back in just a second once I get this on the smoker. All right, guys, I just got the pork in there. I got a tray of warm water underneath it. I'm going to set the timer on a temperature probe to go off at 140 degrees. It's not going to be done yet, but at 140 degrees, I'm going to start basting it with that whiskey um, orange sauce that I'm going to be showing you how to make in just a minute. So we'll stick it in there. I got a combination of the apple and hickory uh, wood chips in here. It's starting to smoke a little bit, so we're just going to let it do its thing. Got it. Uh, in there at around 200 to 225 degrees so we'll be back in a couple hours once we put that uh, whiskey orange glaze is ready to go on there so see you in a little bit all right guys i want to show you how to make the whiskey orange glaze for the pork we start off with two cups of orange juice we're going to add a half a cup of bourbon and for those of you who don't want alcohol don't worry it'll all burn off when the, when it's cooked we're going to add one cup of brown sugar we're going to add two star anise this is a chinese spice hopefully you'll be able to uh, find it at your local store a teaspoon of ground clove a teaspoon of uh, chili red hot chili flakes add a little spice two tablespoons of butter, and last but not least, a cinnamon stick. So we're just gonna heat this on the stove, we're gonna bring it to a boil, and we're gonna reduce it till it's around half the volume that it is now when it gets really thick and syrupy, and this is what we're gonna put on top of the pork when it's done. So I'll start heating this up, and we'll come back in a little bit, and I'll show you how it should look like when it's finished. All right guys, it's been around two and a half hours it's right at 225 let's check out see how they're doing oh, they're looking nice looking very nice they're reading an eternal temperature of 134 right now at 140 I'm gonna start to, I'm gonna turn the heat up and start glazing them with some of that glaze it's still reducing down in the stove top so Put a little bit more smoke chips in there and uh, we'll be back in a little bit glazies over they're looking good all right guys while we wait for the food to cook time to try my little beer today i'm trying something pretty cool probably the coolest container i've tried yet man this is pretty neat this is called mississippi mud black and tan now this is kind of a low-end beer I'll, I'll be the first to admit it you can get one of these uh jugs for anywhere between three and five dollars uh they're a pretty good value for that it's one quart of beer for those of you unaware of uh black and tans you know that's when you mix two beers a pale ale and a stout and uh this obviously is mixed together so it's a darker beer but i've had this before and you know for uh inexpensive beer it certainly isn't that bad Cheers. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's very drinkable. It's mild. It tastes kind of like a watered down Guinness. So it does kind of taste like a black and tan mix. 5% alcohol. Like I said, these, uh, these quart bottles are pretty cool. They kind of stand out. Always nice to have a couple of these in the fridge. You know, it's not the most high end beer around, but you know what? Got some friends over watching the game. They're pretty tasty. Uh, and they're decent quality beer for the price. So that's it. We'll come back in a second and check out the rest of the food. All right, guys, I just took these off. I've been glazing them with that uh, 
whiskey orange sauce for the last 45 minutes. Uh, they hit our internal temperature around 147 degrees. I'm just going to tent them in foil. We're going to let them rest for a good half hour. We'll be back later when we cut into these. Whew, they smell wonderful. Can hardly wait. We'll be back in just a second. All right, guys, here we are. I let it rest for around a half hour. I sliced it. That uh, whiskey orange glaze, you just pour some on top. Man, I've tried some of this, and it's absolutely delicious. Come on. <laughs> Everyone off camera. <laughs> Try and bite. Mmm. Oh, is that good. Yeah, I'm trying to bite. Delicious. Wow, that glaze really, really adds mm -hmm. definition to that. Mm. It is so good. That's amazing. Yeah, it's very, very good. That curing adds a new level to the meat for sure. I would highly recommend this. I don't think there's words to describe how this tastes. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, check out some of my other videos. We'll see you next time.